say it, don't spray it with your host, Joe Burke. Human connection through honest conversation. Nothing wrong with keeping it awkward, my friends. All right, here we are on the show. We're on. This is it. We are recording. Um, okay. This is it. First, first show. First episode. Can I put this down. I feel like yeah, I you can move that around. I don't really know where to look. So I just got these microphones. Uh, literally, they arrived on Amazon from Amazon this morning. Were they were they expensive? Um, they were. I, I didn't get the most expensive kind because I'm just trying to get the hang of this. So I want to do this new podcast. Uh, welcome to the show, by the way. This is Say It, Don't Spray It. Yeah. So Oliver called me this morning. He said, "Hey, let's do some lunch." And I say said, it, "Don't spray it." Say it, don't spray it. That's that's what you came up that's with. That's the name of the show. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Say it, don't spray it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and make sure you're talking to the mic close enough. I think you're good there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Oliver called me this morning and said, you want to get some lunch? I said, I'm trying to get these new microphones I just bought like out of the box. And then I was like, Hey, why don't you come over and be my first guest? It's always an honor. He's a great friend of mine. Uh, we've grown up together. He's an actor, you know, him from, uh, the movies, uh, what movies he did? Project X and Project X. Front Runner. Front Runner. Hangover 3. Hangover 3. Uh, uh. Go, uh, Ghostbusters. You can say that. Out. You're on IMDb. Yeah. No, Ghostbusters. The new Ghostbusters out. coming out. We got pushed to next year because of coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I've done a lot more shit I can't think of. <laughs> Some films with me. He's, he's done a bunch of stuff. Uh, a TV. He did Red, he's from Red Oaks, Californication, and most recently, critically cl- uh, acclaimed performance as David Berkowitz in Netflix's Mindhunter, directed yeah. by the man himself, David Fincher. You know, you know what's funny is like people always ask like, what's you know what what do, you, uh, do I like? You're an actor. What, what do I know you from? What have you been in? And yes. I, and I ne- and I always struggle. I'm like, you have to like go down the list of stuff, and they and they go, mm, <laughs> no. no. I had I tell you this story. This is hilarious. Some this is like a dating app years ago, and this girl was like, she was like, I think I recognize you, and of course I was like, yeah, you know, I'm a actor. And she was, she responded. She's, she's like, oh yeah, what have you been in? And I start listing off shit that I'd done. She's like, no, I don't think so. She's like, do you go to, um, like, wh- what's the coffee shop in Venice? Tom. She's like, do you go to Tom's coffee shop in Venice? You did tell me that. that's hilarious. And I was like, no. It's, it's when you, it's when you want to feel special. Oh, I reckon. Oh, really? You must have seen my work on Mindhunter. No, that coffee shop in Venice. I don't even live in Venice. Um, yeah. Oh man, it's, I still ended up, you know. What banging her? I we. I, yeah, you actually went out with her. I did go out with her. She was. She was. Wait, fun. a girl who just came out with you randomly? And said no, this? no, this was a dating app. Gotcha, gotcha, I went, gotcha. I, I went out with her, and we had uh, we had a good, good time. Good, good. I was at the same. It was like one of those. Like it was a weird one. It was like you. I went straight to her house. She said, you "Just come to my house." Yeah, it was. We, I was so nervous because she was like forty. I have 50 years old. I can't remember. You're always into the 20. older women. <laughs> yeah, I now, why? That. Why? What is it about? Why you're always you're always searching to date a, a 40 a 40 plus year old, and that's great. I think people, I don't know if I want to. All date, women are beautiful, I don't but know why? If I want to date a 40, 40 plus year old. I just there's something about an older. Uh, thank you. Something about older women that are uh, for sure. What is it though? I mean, there's got to be something obviously that tickles your fancy. Is it? I don't know if there's a subconscious. You know, I think yeah, my uh, buddy Omar has a who you know as well, yeah. uh, has a theory that it's like some motherly thing that you're attracted to. That could be. I don't know. That, that's not what I'm exactly thinking about. But there's just like maybe you're some... You're saying psych- in psychology of it all, yeah. there's something about having some sort of motherly, mature figure who can yeah. comfort you, massage you, touch you. Uh, I, well, this, this, the sexual part of it is different than the psychological than what he's like right, he's right, saying right. some psychological the thing. nurturing motherly mother nature yeah, it's nurturing like part a thing i don't want to say it has anything to do with the sexuality i haven't got my phd yet i don't think you have either so we're, no, i don't know what we're talking you, about for those who are listening about our, our psychology <laughs> talk um neither of us are trained professionals but that's great that's great and so how's the dating world going i mean so we're uh in the middle of uh, a pandemic yeah. and so thank you for coming over and doing this and, and again it's an honor to have you be the first guest we, on we, the show we both were tested I, I was tested. I actually yeah. did a test a month ago. Did you actually test or you just yeah. joking? No, I've te- I got tested once. Did they do the swab up the nose? Yep. And what was that like for you? Because um, I'm going to tell you, I actually enjoyed it. I didn't. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was whatever. It, the doc, the, the nurse doctor. Enjoy it? I don't know. I, I, it's You know when you like kind of like eat hot wasabi? In fact, that's how they described it hot to me. Wasabi. They said when they eat wasabi, they go, they go I'm going to put this thing up your nose and it's going to feel yeah. like you just had wasabi with sushi. Yeah. And so I did it and... It, after I left, I was driving home. I was like, God, my sinuses are so clear. Like, I felt like, I I've felt had refreshed. It before. I've had it done before as well. Like, I forget what, 
I somewhat maybe years ago something else. It was maybe another disease. Wait, wait you had another nose up the swab? Yeah, thing? swab. Uh, I've had, I've been swabbed in the nose before. I can't remember what. Gotcha. Florida. Interesting. Maybe, um, the flu, maybe the flu, something. I got sick years ago. I don't remember. I don't know who your doctor is. He's testing you for the flu. With, I, 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 I well, it's just a, it's all that. It's not like in your. It's just a swab test. It's not. It's a common. Do test. you know what? Why do they have to go up the nose? Do you know why? I, they maybe have it's to? more of a. I don't. I'm making. Is there more music? Up. More mucus up there? And it may be more of a potent. Back, yeah, bacteria. Something like that. That's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, so then you're you're sitting in Venice right now. You're living in Venice. Yeah. And you're on the dating apps. Yeah. How's that going? Uh, is it hard to date during coronavirus? Cause I, I actually think you. it's like easier to meet. I there's I feel like there's more people available right now. Is there all everyone's sitting there like so bored and they're like, you know, want connections, you know, and stuff like that. And and I feel like it's very. So easy you're to saying e- easier to meet people on the app, but not in person. Or are you well, saying in person? I'm saying as well? I'm just saying versus like dating app pre coronavirus dating app now. I think the dating apps are way more. They're like hot off. It's like everyone. Everyone's on there. swiping. Everyone's swiping. Is so many people. The, it's easy to connect to match and to like start a conversation for me like i'm like me matching with much more many more people but what's your go-to opening line with these girls like what do you say how do you how do you start how do you spark a conversation i'm not good with it i'm not i would not say i'm good with this dating app stuff like uh <laughs> A, on Bumble, they have to say something, so that's... Is that something that you enjoy that? Is it kind of like, I want to use Bumble because I don't want to be the one that has to no, speak first? No, I don't really care. I just... Because the, 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 if there's something blatantly funny to me, like on their profile page, like where it's like, oh, that's a good one. I could, you know, I don't, I don't even have a good example of this, but there's something, an easy joke where I can say something that's attached to Yeah, make like a personal... Their, Shows that you read the profile. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the least you could do is read the profile. Exactly. It's like two lines. So, so... I uh, yeah I'll 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 do something like that, but normally I just I just go hey I, I this never I don't know this never works I try to be a nice guy I'm actually a pretty nice guy I'm, I'm like like I would agree with that with with, with women too I'm really like oh, yeah. soft and stuff so I I'm like hey you have really pretty you have really pretty eyes Rachel, and it's like that never works. Well, I was gonna say you lead with that. You open with you have pretty eyes. Yeah, I, I, I or, or a pretty smile, like because I do. I really you might want to say hello, Clarice. I mean, <laughs> what? Come I'm just on. joking. No, <laughs> it's not the same. No, thing. no, 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 no. But I mean, you have really pretty eyes. They don't know anything about you. They don't know anything about you. What am I supposed to open with? Like, hey, here's a here's twenty five facts. Well, I about think me. I think. Listen, if I'm to be completely honest, what do I think? I think you know, just talking about physical appearance uh, and the first bat is probably not what they're looking for anymore. I mean, maybe they never were, but I think there's something well, deeper than I, looks. I, I, that's not that like they you going, hey, Rachel, you got they want you person, got great they, you got great tits. It's not that. I'm saying you have. I'm saying you have a lovely smile. I think that's like one of the nicest compliments you could say to. It anybody. totally is. I'm questioning if maybe you're saying that too early in the conversation. You know. Because they don't get any personality, they don't get to know anything about you. You know, maybe it's just a. Con- I always like to start any like if it, it, I do the same thing, and, and this actually works really well. It, you know, I'm I've done the dating apps, you know, off and on for whatever a few years, whatever, maybe more. And the best way to meet people or meet women is to really just go up to them in, in public. And you've been with me when I've done it, and it's and all. I've I, also been with you, and I've also encouraged you. Yeah, what you date a girl who you end up. Well, anyways, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you, I, I say, hey, she's into you. Go get her number. We're in the parking. We're that? in the parking lot at the uh, at the Beverly Hot oh, Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you, went, you went back inside. Yeah, you, you said, hey, because I, I to take you I out, really and you guys dated for like six months. Yeah, thank God, I said to go get. Your no, number. that was awesome. It's always nice to have a friend encourage you. Of and, course. And, and, uh, uh, but that was a, I, I, I complimented her. I think it was her hair. I complimented her on or, and it is something like I'm attracted to that kind of stuff. Like I'll see something on someone that's like hair, smile, eyes. Like those are probably the three things I notice. You hair, know, smile, eyes. Okay. That you would say. There's certain things you notice. You're like, you are a hair person. Also, you you take pride in your hair. But yeah. I actually have seen you. You you like women's hair, and you like you yeah. like kind of like curly. Hair. It's sort of like you kind of like big curly hair. That's a thing. Uh, I also could be into someone who doesn't have that. That's, no, of course you can. <laughs> You're not that picky. You're not that picky. But you are a hair guy. I've yeah. actually noticed that. You're I like right. hair. I like eyes. I like uh, and I hands. Just, you hair, like hands too. Hands. Hair, eyes, you just hands, love smile. you love the beautiful you love women. I love beautiful women. Yeah, I really do. I really do. Um, that's great. So you're single, <laughs> and that's why I'm single. <laughs> no, I mean, I wish I was the guy that was. But you've like, had great relationships. I have. I I've had great short. I'm great, and uh, I always tell. I'm pretty honest normally now, where I tell women I'm really a great date to start. 
I'm great at the beginning. I am such a great first I, two innings. You'll nail it. I am so good. I take. I take. I'm really gentleman. I really am a gentleman. I take them out. Yeah. I treat them really amazing. I, I. I love to like. I'm very spontaneous. I like to go traveling. You know, I did a two. I did a. You know, I did a two week first date with a girl. You did a two. <laughs> Oliver did a two week first date. A girl he never met. Friend of a friend. He. You were where in Amsterdam, Europe, somewhere. I was in Europe, and I. So I. I'll, uh, I could go in the story because it's a good story. Great story. Is uh, I was. Um, so I was kind of broken up about a girl that I really liked and she, she dumped me and, uh, and I was in New York at the time doing a show and I was lonely, even though New York's such a big city, it can be a very lonely city. And so I was so in LA. Uh, so can LA as well, yeah. Any big city, I just felt very lonely at this time because I also was so still really heartbroken. So I, a friend of mine was getting married to this girl, and her, uh, and, and he and he reached out. He's like, hey, on my wedding, you should you should you know meet up or hook up or whatever with uh, with her cousin. And I was and I was and he sent me a picture. I was like, yeah, she's really cute. One so one night I'm hanging out in New York or whatever. I get a Facetime from my buddy, mm. and he, he he's on with his wife, his future wife, his fiance, and this cousin. Mm. And she's kind of drunk, but she was like like really like she was funny and kind of fun or whatever. And uh, it was literally a two minute conversation like and it wasn't even a conversation it was just no, i get it yeah like a facetime two minute kind of thing. drunk wedding phone call hey how are you yeah, yeah, all excited exactly. two minutes and then what then that's it and ends and i was so lonely and so bad at meeting other women when i was in new york <laughs> i started messaging her on facebook and i was like i'll just start talking to this girl so i just kind of started messaging messaging with her you know like flirtatious messaging whatever on facebook no, yeah Social on facebook okay. facebook i think how did you find something. her did she, did she find you first How'd he that gave work? me his my buddy gave me he her gave information it to you. got it so you, you messaged her you guys talked back and forth a little yeah bit. it was just like really casual i was like it was something to kind of keep me mm -hmm. off my mind off of the, the my ex-girlfriend so oh so you're getting over another relationship at the time i told yeah i said that earlier. oh okay so you're getting over gotcha so that's why i was how, how much, was how much time maybe six months nine okay months. so that's, that's a decent it's, amount it's of time it's not a lot it's not that it was you can tell the audience it was your real first love it was my first love so, so it took longer summer. to get over yeah. that. i get that so uh and i was yeah i was super lonely about that and feeling heartbroken whatever and so uh long story short i finished this job in new york and i'm still kind of messaging with this girl every once in a while not every day or anything but like every once in a while and i told her i'm going I, I i was going to europe i'd never been to europe and i was going to do a big trip there because i just made some money for the first time in my life really excellent and and so i was like i'm gonna go to europe i'm gonna go travel around really do it right so I go to, I'm, I'm going all over Europe. I think we we're in Amsterdam, all this stuff. And I'm kind of messaging this girl because she had, you know, just ran it. We were still messaging and she had told me she had traveled abroad. And so she- And you're saying messaging. So you're not, you're not talking on the phone at all. No, no. Just, just, just Facebook messages. That's the time we're living in, by the way. We're like, <laughs> we're having a whole relationship with someone and it's just through it text. It was pretty, it wasn't like every, it wasn't like all day, every day, honestly. It was probably like every- would you say over the course of a month, over the course of two months? How long? How no, long? maybe over the course of a month. So maybe one month, month text. Okay, that's fair. But like every, few, it wasn't like every day, like every, five times a day. It was literally like, oh, I should hit messages every from board. Days, got it. Exactly. Okay. So, and I was like, hey, I'm going to uh, Amsterdam. And you said you studied abroad there. Let me like give me. She was giving me some recommendations. I was in Amsterdam at the time, I think. And so she gives me some recommendations. Now. I'm with my friend in Europe for two weeks, my friend Carl, and we're just traveling around, having a good time. And he's leaving. Like, I was going to be in Europe for, for a month. And Carl's your travel buddy, right? Carl's my travel buddy. Great guy. I know Carl. Great, Great guy. guy. Travel all over the Shout world. Shout out to with Carl. This guy. Shout out to Carl. So he's leaving after, after two weeks, and I'm going to stay for an extra week or two, whatever. And uh, so he, a uh, couple days before, or maybe a week before, I don't even know, I kind of started to be like, oh, shit, Carl's leaving. Like, I'm going to be like, bored by myself here so i i, I messaged this girl we're messaging she's like how was europe blah 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 You're like i'm still or, here <laughs> i'm sorry yeah i'm still there <laughs> and i i asked her i said uh i said out of the blue i was like hey this is might sound crazy i know you don't really know me but if you can book a flight if you book your flight to to rome i'm gonna be there on thursday or whatever you got a free trip because i'm already paid for my places to stay and stuff like that for the next couple of weeks and she was like, "You're insane. I don't really know you. I don't know you." <laughs> blah blah blah. And then which is the which is the very is smart fair answer, fair answer, fair answer. responsible, mature yeah. response. And I'm spontaneous. And you've talked on the yourself. phone zero times. Zero times. Uh, and you've asked her to come fly across the world, exactly. the globe, the planet Earth. 
to hang out with you. Yes. Okay, that's a fair answer. And so she, two days later, she's like, I guess she found some crazy cheap flight. And uh, she was in school at the time. She was she was uh, in uh, uh, like uh, psychology school, like so uh, grad school. Yeah. And uh, so she's she's like got this she's got this amazing flight, and she's like, oh my god, I just found a really cheap flight. Like, <laughs> are you really serious about this? And so I said I said this message I sent a message to her, and I was like, listen, like yes, like you should totally come, like just to throw it out there, like there's no pressure whatsoever to be intimate it'd be an intimate relationship like if you come and we're just friends for two weeks that's like awesome first of all that's great you said that i think it takes a lot of pressure off um i was serious too like honestly because no, I, 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 for me too like i, I you know you, you it's a scary thing to have some girl come for two it's weeks it's the only like, way you can do it it's the only way you can do such a trip like that with two strands across the world you gotta be look Let's just feel this out. Let's be on the same page. Let's be honest. Let's be vulnerable. Let's yeah. be real. And let's talk. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, first of all, that's the point of this whole show right here is to be able to communicate. <laughs> if you make assumptions and you aren't communicating, well, you're going to I also, yourself. I just didn't want to get in a situation where I I was more worried about like her, like me not being into her. Of course. I get that and too. Then, and then it goes both ways. To, yeah. It goes both ways. So, so. Uh, she comes out. She comes out. And, and, and oh, the night before, I finally talked to her on the phone. Cause she calls me and we have a, and, and it was, it was in Italy at the, I was in Italy. I was in Rome, uh, Rome or Sardinia. This is getting very remember. romantic. Whatever. I was in Rome. And, and so I, I'm like nervous. Cause I got, fuck, it's going to be like a, like we talked for three hours on my cell phone. It was like a 400, I got like a $450 oh, shit, bill for shit. that. <laughs> it was the first time we talked and That's I was just hilarious. like really reassuring. Did you have any idea they were going to charge you that much money? Yeah. I was like, this is going to be expensive. And I was like, all right, we should get going now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just yeah. Just Facebook me. <laughs> Facebook message me. I should have like done some Skype call. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. So the next, uh, so, so she, the next day, she, she the next flies day out. she flies out, and now Carl is gone. Okay, all right. I'm by myself in Rome, and I'm really. It's starting to hit me that I'm about to do a two week first date. I'm like, this is <laughs> two week first date. I was like, this is insane. What was I, love I thinking? This. So she's she's like, I'm in my hotel room, and the way that the you know I'm sure you've seen these in these hotel rooms where there's like two beds, but they like put them together and it's one bed. Um, the hotel puts them together. Yeah, you've never seen like these two like a lot of hotels. The beds like if you have uh-huh. two beds, they they that the, re, the like, when they have one bed, it's just because they have two beds and they push. It's like they're they come together. Okay, you've never seen that. Do they have a mattress that's a big mattress for both, or is it separate mattress? No, the separate. Okay. That's how they all I don't are. Know I have seen just, that. they, that's how a lot of them are. So there's a crack. Yes, but they do like they must put something over. I don't know exactly how they do it. So So they push the beds together. So they have it. Yeah. So so Carl's gone, and they like the maids comes in and does it, and it's one bed. And I was like, oh shit! I was like, that's presumptuous. I was like, yeah. I was like, this is really presumptuous. And uh, I was like, fuck. And I tried to explain to them. I'm excuse excuse me, miss. (laughs) No English. She's like, I'm like, I like the beds. beds. I was like the two two beds. Yeah. I was like trying to explain this whole thing to her. So she moves the beds back, and then I'm sitting on the edge of the bed like. You know, pacing. I'm like, she's gonna be here any minute. Oh, so she, you didn't go to the airport to pick her up. You're waiting in the hotel I room. I have a car. <laughs> so the poor girl flies to she another country. Have. I didn't have a car. Wow. I, look, I, I did you, you think did, she doesn't have a car either? It's taxi. That's how we're getting around. How it's far away is the airport from the hotel? Not far. Like 10 that's minutes. what I'm saying. could you have gone and just picked her up there? I didn't even think about it. Okay. Look, <laughs> you're in your twenties. I think a gentleman, the gentleman move is like, hey, I'll meet you at the airport. Not, hey, when you get in town, get a cab and come across town. Uh, Hopefully, you find I me. Th- I don't. I think the. I don't remember ever even the crossing my mind. She, she clearly had no problem with it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. anything weird. So, so, so I sit on it. If sitting, I was coming to visit you for two weeks and you didn't pick me up at the airport, I would have been scared shitless. Is what yeah, I'm trying right. to say. I'm going to take a cab by myself in a foreign country I've never been to? It's Rome. It's Rome. I have a hard time with that kind of stuff. But that's me. She's stronger <laughs> okay, than I am. Okay. Right. So she shows up to the hotel room. She knocks on the door. Are you literally like, sitting in the no, room? No, no, no. So she texts me. She's like, just landed, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like sitting on the edge of the bed. And I'm like sweating. I'm starting to get really nervous. And uh, so she comes, right? She finally, like, I'm like, I, like, I get the text like here. I'm like in the room. I like, jump up. I'm like, all right, fuck. I got to go down. Go down to the lobby. I greet her. She like hugs me. She's all like, fr- she's all for Klempt. For those of you who don't know, for Klempt, like it's Yiddish. It's like she was like, it looked like she just got off of a, a, an airplane, a, <laughs> a long she, flight. She was like, and she was like, take, she told me she took like a Xanax and and and, gotcha. and, and a and a and uh, what is it, uh, Adderall. So she was like all over the place. A Xanax and an Adderall, something like that. Interesting. And she left her phone in the cab. So we oh. na- the first thing we had to do was deal with that. Fire, the, luckily, the cab driver came back. It wasn't a huge deal. Oh, nice, good. And we got the, you know, got the phone back. That's Go easy. back up to my room. Now, uh, 
and and go back up to my room. I'm sitting. I'm back on the edge of the bed. I'm like kind of small talking with her. It's like a little bit awkward. And I'm I'm like, you need to like use the bathroom. You want to, you know, she just got off like a, a tw- you know a 24 hour day of travel, and she's like, I'm like, you want to take a shower or something? She's like, no, nah, I'm good. And I was like. <laughs> Really? You don't? You sure? You don't want to just take a quick it's shower? Free. It's free. <laughs> so she's like, no. She's like, let's go on a tour. And I was like, this girl is like, go, go, go. She's and ready. I'm really not. I'm like, holy shit. All right, let's go on a tour. So, well, real quick, the beds. I'm going back to the beds. The beds are separated. Okay, place. so she walks in. She doesn't even know they're ever together. Yeah. She probably walks in and is actually probably like, all right, this is nice. Beds are separated. No pressure. Two separate beds. Beds are separated. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we go to uh, we go to the Coliseum. You know the Coliseum. I've right? heard of it. The Coliseum. I know, like, I know. I'm kidding. Yes, of course you know the Coliseum. Yeah. So, so we're the gladiators. Are you not entertained? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we go to the Coliseum, do some tour. And the first hour, I was a little bit like, oh, God, this is going to be a really fucking long two weeks. I'm like, I'm really not The first hour this. you felt this? Yeah, I was like, this is going to be... She was just a little like... A the little, energies weren't quite lining she up. She was a little all over the place. She, she, she just traveled across the world. Yeah. You're a little nervous. I get it. She, she was just all over the place. She was a little like... I, like just a little crazy. She's on Xanax. Yeah. She's on... Adderall, yeah. she hasn't slept, whatever, exactly. maybe she slept too much, I don't know. So interesting. We we go to the Coliseum, have a good time. And about two hours into the Coliseum, she was making she was really funny. And we were having like we were like it was like kind of buddy relationship, which is always you don't really get that sometimes I find that hard to get with with, with girls I date. So it was really fun. She was really we had a great time and like we were starting to laugh and like I was just having a really good time. Nice. Then th- by the end of the night, we got dinner. We started to relax into ourselves a little bit because you know how you are when you first of meet anybody, of but let alone someone who could possibly be romantic. Absolutely. Um, so we start to really relax, have a good time, having drinks, eating, really good food. I'm walking around Rome, and I finally just make the move and I kissed her, and it was amazing. We had a great. T- it was a great kiss. First kiss in Rome, and we're under like the stars, twirling around. Twirling. Like on the, I mean, Rome is like. But besides Paris, it's got to be the most romantic place on That's earth excellent. that I've been to, at least. That's excellent. And so we're like, you know, twirling, I'm dipping, and I'm such a, 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 a You're romantic. romantic. You are. You're hope- so, I, think <laughs> I think I am, too, so I think we bond on that. You may be more so. You're old school. You have an old soul. So I, you know, all the romance stuff, we go back, and I remember saying, like, no way we're having sex. Or maybe I said that. And I was like, I, I was like. You, you told me the story. I, I, going, think, I, I think you said you you said I'm not gonna have sex. Yeah, tonight. I was like I was like I didn't want to rush having sex. That's I was like smart. I'm not gonna have sex tonight. Respectable. But then, let alone things happened. We had sex that night. Okay. Okay. So we end up having sex that night. And the funny thing is, the next day, I was like, when the maid was coming, I was like, push the beds together. <laughs> push the beds together. <laughs> One bed. That's great. <laughs> so then, cut to like two weeks go by we're having like it was like it went from like romance on day one or two to like. By seven days in, we were like a sixty-year-old married couple. Are you kidding? Like me? it was like you—you you kind of saw our relationship. I didn't know it happened that quickly. No, no names, but but yeah. Uh, so, but we were basically like this like romantic couple, like bickering, but like also laughing, and we were having a great time. It was just like very, it was very odd how comfortable we got really quick. And uh, we ended up traveling all over. We went to we went to, from Rome to the Amalfi Coast, and I like I said, I just made money for the first time in my life. So I booked like uh, uh, I had a uh, I booked a boat, two boats with a captain, all day prosecco wine. Where you, like, really? Eating, like, yeah, eating like kings, staying at like five star hotels. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like I'm showing like basically a honeymoon in your, it was basically a honeymoon for us on the first day first week <laughs> yeah by the way I don't know if you drink whiskey but here's I, a, I'm good on whiskey just give me a toast for the first right, show right, you, know, you don't have to drink it but right, I'll drink it to um right. great story and great you guys did, you ended up dating for a while right after this I'll smoke that so uh, yeah we ended up having uh, like so the, the two weeks went by and I was like I remember at the airport we're dro- you know dropping her off. And we had, I ended up having a great time, but I wasn't like, I was, like I said, I was still like, and she didn't really know this. And this was probably unfair on my end. Uh, I was not really over my ex-girlfriend. So I, and, and I first love started to get over. I, really I went through to that too. Over. I mean, I didn't have my first love till I was, uh, later in life. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Probably a little older than you. And, uh, I don't know. I'm still over it. No, I'm kidding. I no, I, I do. I, I you always have say, a heart. You always got your heart. Little, it's, gone. It's, it's like they, they, they creep up on you. But uh, yeah, we ended up. I remember at the airport, I was saying goodbye, and I was like, because she lived in a different city than me, and uh, um, I was like, she was like, well, do you want to like still talk and date or whatever? And I was like, and it was the first time it hit me. I was like, I 
I think in my gut, I was like unsure if I wanted to do that. But I was like, I didn't want to say no because I also really liked her. Right, right. And uh, so anyways, long story short, we ended up dating for like, I would say a year and a half. Yeah, a little over a year and a half, maybe off and on. I don't remember uh, the day. Maybe a year, maybe a year and a half. I mean, that's probably your longest relationship. Knowing yeah. you, that was probably your longest relationship. Yeah, and we broke up a bunch of times, and we fought all the time, and like it was a mess. But and a lot of that, I do, you know, a lot of that. You always have room, me. though. You'll always have room. Yeah, we had a great time. I don't regret any of it. I mean, I I think the relationship part of it was like. A, part of me not being over my ex-girlfriend, and I was also really immature. Also, relationships are just fucking They're tough. hard. They are hard. They're really, really hard. So I'm sorry out there to, uh, I don't want to say her name because that's no, it's okay. disrespectful, but I'm if sorry If she's listening, to her. hey, look. If she's listening. You guys had a great time together. Is, but we did have a good time. Uh, and it was amazing. I, I love the spontaneous stuff. And well, I was going to say that. I was going to ask you about that because I want to get inside uh, Oliver Cooper's mind here as we're mm. talking. He's lighting up a CBD uh, pre-roll here. Um, it's actually all CBD. I don't think there's actually Yo, any THC. Hopefully not. I hate smoking weed. There's no THC in there. I think it's all CBD. I love smoking, but I hate Friends smoking weed. Friends company, they, they, they sell these, and I bought one from them. Um, so you've done this before, though. It's hot in here? Yeah, I, I don't have central air, and I'm not going to put the AC on because we're on the mics. But um, we're going to sweat it out a little bit, drink some whiskey, smoke. So you, you, the spontaneous part, let's just talk a little bit about that because you, you, you live your life that way. You've been for the last, what, four or five years kind of been living out of a suitcase, so to speak. You've mm. been renting houses, traveling around. Um, you've also tried to take, uh, not try, but you've gone on other trips with women or asked to go, you know, say, hey, like, let's just let's just get out of here. Let's go to Japan. Yeah. And, like, p- girls like that. They, they love the sponta- spontaneity. Some, some, like, some, some don't. Some love it. And, and, and it's funny. I'm actually, like, I just, like, kind of been talking to some this girl recently, and she's spontaneous to the point where she reminds me of myself, and it's kind of scary when someone else is doing that. So you're currently talking to someone you met on a dating app during coronavirus? Just online. And she lives... For Somewhere far else. away, right? Yeah. Out of the city. So you're Out just talking. City. And she, she, and she's like really like, I'm like, like almost like so quickly to be like, and it's funny. I'm always like trying to push girls to be like spontaneous. Like, she's she's crazy. More spontaneous and than she's you. probably more than me. And I'm like, I'm like, oh shit. Like the first time in my life, I've been like a little scared of someone. You're like, wow, you're really, really comfortable to do some wild shit like that. But then, then again, I think about this where. If you look back at like the old days, like my grandparents' generation, right, the nineteen forties, thirties, twenties, whatever, mm-hmm. they got married. It was like you met some, you met a girl, right? Like let's say you met a girl today, you were married within like a month or two, for sure. And it was, and it wasn't weird, right? And and it was like you you dated like for for especially uh, in the very Jewish religion, I, by the way. I mean, Jewish. I don't think it had anything to do with Jewish. No, but I, I was listening to someone else talking about this recently. I mean, the Jewish religion, you gotta. You, you basically you don't start dating until you're ready to kind of get married because Jewish Orthodox you're Jews. You're talking about Orthodox Jews. Orthodox Jews. Yeah, I'm that's talking a about. whole different thing. But I'm but just we talking a, about we have a friend who's Orthodox now who's yeah. who's just got engaged. That's that's a whole different thing. I'm talking about just the general public. Right. Was you know not maybe that not quite Orthodox. Well, my mom was like 24 when she had me, something like that. I'm 36. Yeah, it's hard. To I believe, feel like right? kids are like well, one day when I grow up, maybe I'll have kids. I'm fucking sitting here 36 yeah. years old. The psyche of our generation it's is totally different. Uh, totally different. And uh, why is that? Is because I don't know. Well, here's a, here's something interesting. I, I I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan, right? Mm-hmm. And I love that old school. Like I just I actually love history. I really love reading about like especially this COVID has got me a lot of time to just. I kind of going back and been watching yeah, a lot of time and, to watch YouTube and old stuff and reading old stuff. And uh, Mel Brooks was talking about a story about how he met Anne Bancroft, his wife, mm-hmm. for like many years, and she was like the the goddess right. of that time, like she the most was beautiful the, the, it girl, of Hollywood, the it girl of Hollywood for sure. And he, like, he had he was a famous, a well known writer, but not Mel, not the Mel Brooks that we know today. Right. He hadn't done all of his movies at this point. Uh, and he had done the 2000 year old man, which was a skit with him and Carl Reiner. Mm -hmm. And so he's at uh, a rehearsal for her on some stage, just watching. And he's like, and Bancroft, I love you. (laughs) And she, and, and, uh, and, and he starts, uh, and she's like, who is that? And he's like, Mel Brooks. She's like, Oh my God, I have your, your record. And long story short is he basically for the next two weeks, as the story goes, as he was saying, he, um, basically stalked her, like went everywhere. He's like, and I can't believe you're here at the bar. I can't believe you're here. And he just stalked her for like two weeks. And like nowadays you could never do that to a woman. Like, but then they were married and like, then they, it was the love of their life. Like, I think people are almost afraid to go with that. Like, impulsive. I mean, that's a really, really interesting point. I mean, also I think there's two sides to that. I mean, a, 
is it is it does it make women uncomfortable or people uncomfortable if you kind of approach them so many times in two weeks to show your confess not confess but to really show off your love but b maybe there are people who would still enjoy that and appreciate that we're just as guys nervous to do it because we don't know well for i sure. don't think it's just guys i think or anyone i think it's guys and girls i think we're in a i think we live in a society and i don't know society's just changed there's so many options like back then you know it's like you didn't have that many options it was like now you got the whole world. Like I can literally Options meeting like how to meet people. Yeah, I can literally no social swipe, media, I can no swipe dating across apps. the whole world. Right, yeah, right, right, right. And you have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I've like ran out. They're like, there's right. no more matches in yeah. the entire year. There United are no States. more <laughs> single girls on earth. Please come back tomorrow. <laughs> um, that's the worst, is when you're swiping yeah. and they're like, Oh, that's all the I'm in Los today. Angeles. How did I run out of people to possibly yeah, match right. with? We have no wow. other single women available for your observation. But yeah. Um interesting. Yeah, get you thinking. So, how are you holding up during this uh, coronavirus time? By the way, are you? What, what? I'll be honest, man. I I've been doing pretty good. Like, I mean, I listen. I've always, you know, as you know, struggled with depression and different types of anxiety mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've been handling. Like, you know, I, I do. I oh, you know, the, I guess the anxiety comes from like, oh shit. Like, I hope I can make a living after this is over. Or is mean, this meaning ever what over? though? You're saying you're thinking that show business or like work, show actor business life? is always like. Show business, even when in good times, is scary. Right, right. <laughs> Let alone when the city's closed down yeah. and there's a pandemic. So, but I've actually been really productive. You know, the beginning of this COVID, I you know wrote a couple things, and just uh, look, I've just luckily been pretty productive and like giving me a little bit. And these things of like I'm seeing these things through, so they're giving me a little bit of hope. Um, also, I just been I've been taking better care of myself, and uh, I've. I went on a road trip with you. We went across the country. Yeah, yeah. Oliver and I did a road trip in June. That was we can talk about that for a minute. Uh, so in June, Oliver was back in Ohio visiting some family. I was sitting here in LA, and um, I actually just got out of a relationship myself. So I was sort of like out of a relationship, freshly, uh, not doing much because nothing's happening. I'm a you know commercial actor, no auditions. I teach film school part time, but there's no classes other than on Zoom a little bit. So Oliver, like, hey, I'm doing a cross country road trip. I'm going to drive from Ohio back to California with uh, our buddy, his buddy Al, our buddy Al. And uh, I said, you know what? I want to join you guys. So I flew out to Atlanta, and you guys were already on the road. For, you drove from Ohio to South Carolina for a couple of days, and then picked me up in Atlanta. And we drove yeah. through Atlanta, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, New Orleans, where we stayed for a couple That's days. Amazing. Texas. What a trip! What a great trip! Incredible it was, it trip! Really was amazing. Incredible trip and an incredible time to see the country at this state. And uh, you know, some places you went to. In Mississippi, what was it? Uh, what was the city in Mississippi? Biloxi. Biloxi, Mississippi. Is that Ash yeah, yeah, that's Ash right there. Um, you know, that, we stopped at a casino just to check it out. I think you, me, and Al were the only three people wearing masks at the casino. That yeah. place was packed. Uh, this is that a, was a, that this was a early poor June. choice. A, well, I lost money, and B, that that was like the only time I've been in. I actually, won money. Thank that, God. That was the only time I was I've been in the COVID in, during this COVID. I was like, that was probably irresponsible. I think we just wanted to look at it. We weren't there long. We had a mask, but I wanted to take a look with my own eyes to see how people were handling it. It was packed, no mask. And then we went to the next the next night, the next day, we went to New Orleans. My first time in New Orleans, ghost town. You, me, and Al were the only three people in the entire city walking around the French Quarter for two days. Yeah. Uh, literally a few bars open. Uh, they were hit really hard with coronavirus. Then well, we get to Texas. Well, the interesting and- thing about the whole trip was like, you know, I think, you know, also this was like really, this was, I would say, well, it's feel it's like, the, the, I feel like this coronavirus has its peaks and then it goes down and then it's up again. Of so we were at like the, the, the beginning of the coronavirus, right? March, April it was like fucking crazy, right? You know, like if you, if you were like anywhere, people thought you were insane, right? If like, it was like that time where no one was doing anything for you know, for a month or two. And we went right after that where people were starting to like in certain places were going to restaurants. It was like certain things were opening up. And so that's when we went on this trip. So it was a really interesting time just to see the country. It was, it was before Texas and all those states really got hit it hard. The, it, was a, it was before they had the resurgence of this. Right, or right. I guess they still say it was the first wave, but it was... Th- things were starting to open up in these countries, in these states. You know, I've been having a lot of conversations with people because I've been traveling a lot. Um... You know, I, I, some people think the only per- person that's been all throughout every state in the country. Look, I've traveled more in the last eight weeks than I've done in eight years, probably in terms of how many states I've been to. I've probably been to 14, 15 states in the last eight weeks, uh, talking to a whole bunch of family, friends, just trying to get a sense of what's going on in the world. And to be honest, that was part of the inspiration for starting this podcast is I just I've had so many great conversations with people. And I just realized that, like, wow, we need to have more conversations, because if you're only living through the news, if you're only living through social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, the per- the perception of how people are handling this or talking to each other or not talking to each other, yelling this, that, 
it's different in the world. And you know that. It's different when you talk to people. So I was like, we got to have more conversations. I feel like the, the idea of just people talking and having conversations and connecting on things that bring us together as opposed to pull, pull us apart. I mean, I, I have family members who are going to vote for Trump. I do. I have family members who are going to vote for Biden. I have family members who are going to write in Andrew Yang. I mean, there are so many people who I know. I have people who are like, fuck, I'm not going to vote anywhere. Yeah. Which I'm not here to judge anyone's decision on anything. But having conversations with so many different types of people... Um, I realized at the end of the day, I was able to have good conversations with all of them and, and understand what their points are and why they're thinking well, the way they're thinking. People aren't that, that, just that, crazy. That's interesting because I, I felt like when we went to uh, Texas, um, you know, and you and you meet and, and you meet some people. Like I, my, I got lost on when I, I've been running and I, I started running again this past. Oh, in year. Bandera, Texas. This is a story. Where, so oh, I, right I got now. lost in Bandera, Texas. Well, let, I, let's just set it up real quick. In the morning, uh, we were, we're at Airbnb for one night in Bandera, Texas, which is the cowboy. Uh, try it again. The Cowboy uh, Capital of the World, Bandera, Texas. We're staying in this little Airbnb on the countryside in Texas. Really beautiful time. Our, our checkout's 11 a.m. Oliver gets up at 9.30 in the morning. He's been doing a little bit of a jog every day, which is great. Staying in shape, 30-minute run. So he goes out for a run. Well, he doesn't come back. He doesn't come back. We wait about an hour. He's not back. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take the rental car out for a spin. I drove around the premises a couple miles around radius. No word of him. Now I'm starting to get worried. Shit, where the fuck's Oliver Cooper? Do I have to call his parents and be like... I can't find your son. I'm with our buddy Al. So me and Al, so we go back to the Airbnb. We get all our luggage. We pack, we pack up Oliver's stuff too because I'm like, we got to check out now. So we put all the uh, luggage in the car. Then we go back on another drive around the town trying to go, you know, we're driving up and down the little highway there like looking like, is his body like in a ditch? Like God forbid. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe he got, I, I, I don't know what happened. And then eventually you call us and say, hey, I'm back. I you. No, you said I'm back. You, you, you messaged me. You said, I know that the, 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 so the, yeah, the so, so we're still in the car host. driving around. Yeah. The Airbnb host calls us and says, hey, your buddy's yeah. back and he's looking for so you guys. So what happened was on my end is I went running and I got, I literally, I tried to like keep an eye on the streets and I'm really, my, I'm, my sense You're terrible direction at directions. Fucking terrible. Which way is the ocean from here? Just point. <laughs> this way. <laughs> That's wrong. I really don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. I, I have a really, my brain does not work with directions. I just, because I understand north is that, or no, like it depends on where you're at, I guess. I think LA is the easiest place for the direction because you know if you can find the ocean, which is always west, yeah. then north and south That's and east true. is a piece of cake. I, I, Despite the fact, doesn't matter. you're not good I'm directions. So you go for a jog, catch us up. For me, I'm only see like north is always that's this way or right in you know north north not always right in front of you that's, you, you could be that's facing any think. direction that's what i'm saying yeah if you always so i north. don't understand it it's bad i'm like a, you know, everyone's problem. got their intelligence in certain areas you have your Mine strengths not. it's not uh, got it. so i get i look at the street corners and i'm like okay okay this is it so anyways i'm running and i and i and I thought I turned on the right street, but I, I the, the name that I had, whatever it was, like Crystal Road or something. Right. I didn't see. I I, I just didn't see. It, you so were so close to not being lost, and you just turned around one street too soon. Yep. And, then, and so I and then I then I started, and it was very hot, and I had no water. It started. It's like yep. I mean, we're talking a hundred degrees in Texas. Hundred degrees. You know, June. Not Texas. not like there's not a lot of trees around. There's not a lot of stores. Countryside nothing. farmland. Yep. And and I don't know any. You can't just show up on someone's farm. That's like really not what you. Especially want to not do. there. There was yeah. a lot of signs that were like yeah, not well. Welcoming signs. Scary. So I start running, and I and, and now I just start going, going, going. I'm like, and I get to a point where like I'm starting to get delusional that I'm like, did I? I'm way now. I'm way gone now. I don't even know where the fuck I started. I'm like, all turned around. My head's not working. I'm overthinking, and it's hot, and all this stuff. I'm like, should I go hang up under that tree? <laughs> should I stop someone? I start wave down a couple people. No one stops. So you're waving down cars on the little highway there. Yeah, no one stops. And finally, I like help. Hell, and I'm starting to get really winded, which is scaring me because I'm like, I, I'm hydrated. Like, should, of I, course. should I conserve my energy right, right now, right. <laughs> or should I keep running? <laughs> it's a bad situation. Don't keep running. I had no shirt on either, so oh god. So I end up flagging that someone's out. They don't stop, and then they all of a sudden, like you know, 100, 200 yards up, they stop. This truck mm -hmm. and I run up. I'm like, oh, and they're like, what's going on, partner? And I was, there's two guys in the truck, and they, they, one of them's got like a, some sort of MAGA Trump hat. I can't remember. And I was, MAGA, MAGA hat. Yeah, a, a, one of the red which ones. Which is like, I can't remember which one it was. Was I, it red? I think so. Yeah, yeah a, a red, a red MAGA hat. MAGA we all know what those are. So Make I'm like, again. And, and, and it's funny. Like I don't really care who you like as up in politics or whatever but those hats there's something scary about them i guess <laughs> let's talk more about that there's something like maybe it's the media put that in my head but there's something that's scary so these guys are like hey, come on get in the truck man we're you're just too hot out here and i'm like uh <laughs> i'm like okay so i get in the truck and i'm in the back of the truck long story short is don't judge a book by your cover by a cover because these guys ended up being really great 
guys. Like, they, they, they were ranch hands, right? Like young, ranch hands. They're working on ranches. Big pickup like, truck. Yeah, just like cowboy hat or. You said one one of them was that, and they were brothers. They ended up being one brothers. One cowboy hat, one make America great hat. They're like, hey, yeah. we got to run down. Why don't you take, we'll take you downtown. We got to run down. I'm on their phone. I'm trying to call <laughs> my brother. He doesn't answer. He doesn't recognize the number. Uh, Shout and, out to Jason Cooper, and, Oliver's brother. And so I, I'm i like, and I don't know any. I don't know Joe's number. I don't know my other brother, Al's Which number. Which is another thing in these times. No one knows anyone's fucking phone number. That's I mean, true. you've called me 100 times in your I life. Your maybe number. you called me 100 times. Maybe you called me 1,000 times. Number, I don't even know how your number starts. So uh, I don't even know. I know how my number starts. No, three. Start at three. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so, so I end up going down. We go to downtown Bandera, which is like, there's only like one little downtown. Yeah, it's area. like nine miles and, away. And, and, he, and we, he's like, I just got to stop at the, uh, um, at, the, at the hardware store. So we stop at the hardware store. This guy, the one brother runs in, and the other guy's like offering me a joint. That he's got in the car. So you're sitting in the car, sweaty, dehydrated. Are you shirtless? Are you wearing shirtless. Jogging without a shirt Sweat on. Sweating my ass off in this guy's Freaking truck. out with a, with two strangers in a pickup truck. One guy's wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Yeah. One guy's wearing a cowboy yeah. hat. And they're offering you a joint. Yeah. And this is 11 a.m. where you should be checking out of your Airbnb. And meanwhile, me and yeah. Al are driving around yeah. looking for a dead body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. So the, then these guys end up, I, I, I forget. I think I looked on Airbnb and like found, like it doesn't show you the exact address, but it shows you kind of where it is. Right. And these guys, oh, I know I know where that is. So then they end up like driving me back down there, right? Nice. And I'm starting to get to know these guys and come from them like, you know, I'm hoping like, is this the way? Like, I hope they're not taking me to some dungeon or something. And these guys are like, man, you gotta be careful, like white, you know, white uh, supremacists out here and shit like that, and like, uh, you know, and and these guys would end up talking like, you know, basically being like, yeah, fuck those guys. Like they were like anti that, which was interesting. They were like anti white yeah, supremacists yeah. and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, good, good. And well, look, and, I mean, I think it's fair to say that not every person who is a Trump supporter is anti semitist or whatever. These guys, these guys ended up being like. Like I, I, you know, I listen. I don't know them that well, but they, they were, they ended up dropping me off, and I offered them like, let me give you guys some money to buy a case of beer. Ironically, I got back, and you guys were gone. I, didn't, I wouldn't even been able to <laughs> give them. They didn't say yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll take some money. Oh, actually, my wallet's not here. Uh, um, so they were like, nah. He's like, this is what you're supposed to do. And I was thinking, like, dude, I know a lot of people that wouldn't great, do that. By the way. They said that. <laughs> yeah. This is that is what we need more of in this country. This is what you're supposed to do. And but I did have, you know, this is also just. I had a. Re- I remember thinking about this really in an interesting way because. Like I was like, man, this is interesting. I know a lot of really hardcore liberal people that wouldn't have done, wouldn't pick up someone, like mm. just anybody, right? There'd be like, I'm not fucking like in LA, like who the fuck is picking up anybody like that in a situation like that? Mm. But I also say this: it was at the same time where the I think the George Floyd thing was happening, and the America right. was trying to talk about this. And I thought, I thought, if I was a black guy, same set situation running in that street, would anyone have picked me up? Mm. And I probably mm. think no. I, I honestly think with, like I don't know. I don't want to say I don't. I, I don't want to judge because I don't know. But I, I, odds are that, that was good. But because of the George Floyd stuff and just where, where, where we were, you were right in that headspace. I was like thinking about that. I was like, yeah, I got, I, the first time I've ever really been like, oh shit, like I'm privileged, All right? In that sense, where I could, and 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 I actually, I think not only am I white, but also I'm lucky. I have a very soft look. Like, I don't think a lot of people are. I've never been. I've never felt like threat. Like people don't get threatened when sure, they see me. Sure, sure. No, I don't at all. And, and I think it's my hair and whatever look and whatever. So, so uh, I'm lucky for that because there is like if you look like if you if you look like just one, there's some people that just unf- I don't want to say unfortunate. But it, you know, I'm sure it's got its benefits in certain ways. Look, I think you're talking about people judging people. I think you're talking about people judging people based on the way they look, color of their skin, what hats they're wearing. You're talking about the level of judgment that has now happened in this country and also the level Everywhere, of distrust all over the world. All over the, all, all it's not the world. A, it's not a, it's That's not fair. A, I think there's a, I think there's a, a weird that's theory weird. where, where the America is the only place that's judging people. Like if you go to mm. any other country, it just is different because you know, we don't, we, we're, it's not, America is a, is a mosh posh or what a mosh, boiling what pot, a, a boiling pot of different mishmash, of, mishmash of people of up. all different uh, you know, all different ethnicities, colors, all this stuff. So it's, it's, a, sure. you know, America doesn't really have, it, it, we're all immigrants here in America. Even like the white people are immigrants. So it's like, we don't really have like one thing, but you go to Japan, it's like, you're all, everyone there is J- Japanese. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's harder to, to see the judgment, but you would have a hard time being in Japan, uh, being a white person or even a black person in Japan breaking into their, like they would, they're very secluded and, 
uh, uh, in what they do, you know? How do you think uh, America, the country that we're living in right now, how do you think it's doing in these right now? Just what, what, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on the where the country's at right now and how you feel it's doing and what do you think about the future of it? I don't know. I mean, I think, well, listen, I think it's obviously it's a ten, tense time in, in America, but I also think it's, I don't think that it's in a worse position. I think it's that the curtain has been Open. opened and you're seeing this you're seeing the acne mm. and the scars that mm. america has because america if yeah. you, america is like you read the textbooks and stuff it's like we're this beautiful country that's done so much beautiful beautiful things for so many people like the, the, what you read is some bullshit i mean america is built on slavery on prejudice on on uh, not just towards black people towards a lot of different people and a lot of different things and and uh and and we're and and it's heavily driven by money and power and greed and all those things so and it hasn't changed that hasn't changed in fact it's probably gotten a, th- that part maybe has not gotten better but like racial inequality has gotten be- like you can't argue like it's gotten a little bit better you know what I mean? Like, it, it versus like what it was in 1950. Like mm-hmm. we went through the South. Mm-hmm. To it's still fucking racist, no mm-hmm. question about it. Mm-hmm. But there, it's definitely not what it was in 1950. No, no, no. We're I I think I think there's one side where you could say we're we're definitely making improvements. But it's still. And I think there's one side that's saying, why the fuck is it taking so long to make improvements? Yeah, it's fucked. I mean, and and, and it's and it's. I mean. It's like uh, I, I don't think it's gonna. I think it's gonna take even. I think people until these generations. Does this die election off, affect it? Does 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 the does November third election coming up affect one way or the other in your mind? Do you do you do you see a, depending on the outcome a different scenario of where America goes? Uh, I would. I mean, listen. I I don't know. I I I think I would think that it would help to not have such a divisive president. That's that's like. I feel like he riles everybody up. Whether you what, talk about Trump, yeah, I, th- I don't think you know whether you, I'm not. I'm not really political myself, and I try not to not even sure. watch this stuff. Sure. But I think having someone who's just not riling up the country in a time where, where, where there's always been tense moments in in American history versus yeah. for for racism and for for war and for other reasons. Like there's there's always every ten years like a peak of of tension for some reason. And uh, I think you want someone in that in that moment who's chill everybody out and to bring people together. And I don't think we. Well, have I think that. that's a big thing. Bringing so, people together is a very very big thing. So I I would hope whoever is president would do that. That 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 I think is important. I mean, we're, 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 it's the leader, right? We have a leader. We need a leader. We need someone. And I'm not saying Trump. Fuck maybe this I mean, it's not a political statement. Just a, a common sense statement, right? Yeah. A, a leader should lead everyone in the country. A leader should be for everyone. They should. Uh, support, you yeah. know, all Americans, no matter who you are. I just think a lot of Americans are driven by uh, their their, you know, most people are dr- driven by their family and their community, and not on a bigger picture thing. So it's they 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 really care about their their like if you if you live in Ohio where we grew up, I think you 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 worried about your job, mm-hmm. your the health of your, of your family. And where what school your kids are going to go to, and uh, and your if you're whatever your denomination is, like yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, look, beliefs, you, you gotta. They, they 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 are not thinking about public schools in even their city. They don't give a shit that the rival school down in the poor part of the uh, of, of the city is is falling apart. They're, they they their mindset are like. Does it affect my family? Does it affect anyone I really care or know about? And if the answer is to, and I, I'm not saying I believe this is the right way to think. I'm just saying this is how a lot of people think. Yeah, people think. Does how does it affect my 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 life, my world, my it, perspective? And if it doesn't, if it, 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 in a lot of people, if you look selfishly, there are a lot of people, and this is why I believe Trump ha- wins the last time and has yeah. a chance sure. to always win. Sure. Is he is playing to that person where it's like, listen, I'm going to lower your taxes. It's going to hurt, maybe hurt the country in the long term. I don't know this. I'm just saying right. this. And and uh, and they, if it helps them immediately, if I if I'm if I'm if I own a company and I say I'm going to save fifty thousand dollars next year, mm-hmm. and my and it's none of this shit's going to none of the shit that this president's doing is going to affect uh, in a negative way my little cocoon. 
then they vote for him. And that's all they think about. They don't, they ignore that. he. It's like they don't hear the racist stuff or they don't hear the... the well, they're only focusing on policy. They're focusing on what's the policy that's going to help my family survive throughout the day. Yeah. And if you're going to go on Twitter and be a schmuck fuck and say stuff that is obviously offensive, it's like, look, I don't have time for this. Like, fine, open your yeah. mouth, don't. Like, please stop. Like, it doesn't help anything. Your policy over here I like. But like, God, you're such a fucking asshole sometimes um, or a moron or whatever you want to call it, you know? And... At the end of the day, if you have to vote between how do I feel about him emotionally and what's the policy he's given them, they're going to vote for policy if they're happy with the policy. Yeah. I'm not saying and, everyone and is. A lot of people also are Some like... the policies it's, suck. It's like a lot of people are like... They, they, a lot of people, you could almost look at this in religious terms too. People are like, they believe something, so they will believe it no matter what. It's like the Jewish people are always right or the or the Christian people are always right or the Catholics are always right no matter what. You don't even, like even if the evidence is right in front of you, like this is fucked up what they're doing or something, they, they won't believe it. Mm. And I think that the, the, I think the same goes for a lot of Republicans and Democrats where they're like, they will, to, to stand with this, this, Program or what, what do you call? Uh, that they will be with Republicans no matter what. And there are people like that. Oh, you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. They're just gonna go with the Republic. It's like it's they're they're voting on that like which to me Republican and Democrat is a silly idea anyway. For sure, for sure. It's like like what does that matter? Like I I don't like for me it's like and the, how different are they really in some ways? Not really. I don't think so. I right. I, I would be totally okay with the, that system being completely done. And then there's just uh, you know, we got to find a way. To, clearly, it's not working. Yeah, clearly, it's not working. I, I, you know, everyone's having problems with all these people. So I don't. I we don't have to get too too political in the moment, but clearly, it's not working. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how things kind of uh kind of shape up here. It'll all work out. I mean, the thing that I that keeps gives me hope is that if you really think about um. The hi- you look at history. All you got to do is look at history to understand where things are going. And, I, and we've been through w- horrible times in history, sure. and we made it through. Everyone thinks, oh, coronavirus, we're done. The country's over. The world's over. Never going to recover. We always recover. We always You always like want to bet on hum- – humans are amazing. I mean, they really are amazing, and especially in groups. When they come together, they do amazing things. I totally so, agree. I, I'm not really worried about the country or the or the uh, or the or the or the world for that matter. I think we're going to come together. I think there's going to be more conflict in the yeah. future, yeah. and it's going to get better and better and better. And probably the biggest concern that we should have as a country and a world is figuring out a way uh, to uh, save the planet a little bit. I would think global because, warming on that. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a, uh, a scientist. I don't pretend to understand oh, all a planet, of it. We can't have anything else. But like I think you know if that stuff that they're really saying is all true about global warming and all this stuff in the planet like and stuff I've read if it's true we're well, that's a big that's like all this stuff doesn't mean shit because we're going to be gone. I think and, we have to shift our mindset and how we as people get along our priorities what we want to really be doing how do we want to move forward what does our future look like and get rid of the noise and the distractions that are not even our fault sometimes. Sometimes it is a part of the bigger picture of distracting people from real issues and we'll throw this over here while they get distracted and they'll do this over here. Whatever it is, I want to look at it. And I'm hoping that, God, I'm hoping that we can get through this next election in one piece, and I think we can, but it's, not, it's going to be bumpy. Yeah. But I hope that no matter who wins, no matter what happens, if we can just somehow find a way to start talking to start having yeah. conversations that are healthy. I mean, that's my biggest concern is people are not listening to each other and are throwing around so much misinformation and we're all doing it. I'm guilty of it. Everyone's guilty of it. Trying to figure out what the hell is really going on and whoa, time out, just time out. Can we just take a deep breath and just talk and figure out what it is that we really want? What are we fighting for? Let's let, let's let's talk. Let's come to the table and talk. And I don't know. I mean, look, I, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. That's why I'm doing this. Uh, if people are wondering why the hell is Joe Burke starting a podcast, well, I'm doing this because I want to have conversations. I want to be able to bring people together. And and you like to talk. I'm a talker. You're a talker. I'm a talker. But you know what? I think now more than ever is a time to have conversation because uh, if we don't, I could feel the, the, the country just boiling right now. We're just about to erupt yeah. in a way that like I don't know what that looks like. It'll be okay. 
I think so. It'll be okay, no matter what. Even if it, even if it's, even if it erupts and it's, there's chaos and anarchy. I mean, the it, everything, it'll find a it'll way. Find Life a way finds to a come way to, to come together. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna have, you know, like, like if you really think about it, even as bad as this COVID stuff is, we have a lot of stuff to, like, a lot of things going right. You know, you no one, you're not starving to death. You're drinking a glass of whiskey. You're smoking it. You know what I mean? We're we're having. You and I are lucky. I, I, I know how blessed I am yeah. right now to be able to be sitting here during a global pandemic, having a glass of whiskey, making a podcast show. I, I, I'm aware yeah. of uh, how lucky I am. Not everyone's this no, lucky. No, not everyone is this lucky. Which is why we need to come together and have conversation because um, we need to encompass everyone. We need to have everyone benefit. And everyone needs to... Anyways, uh, that's it. That's where we're going to leave it. All right. Oliver, thank you so much yeah. for doing the show. Um, Thanks for having me. Of course, man. This is an honor to have you on the show. Is the first, you know, hopefully the show can go on. You know, my goal is to at least do this until the election, have some conversations with folks. Maybe this show will go on longer. I hope you come back and talk more because um, I love talking with you, brother. Yeah. And uh, it's always fun. a lot of fun. So. Thank you for listening. If you're out there, I appreciate it. This is the first episode of Say It, Don't Spray It. Please subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel, whatever. Follow the show. Listen for more. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, be good to each other and uh, have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Subscribe now. Follow. You'll be happy you did. And check out Say It Don't Spray It Podcast.com for more. We'll see you next time. And remember, say it, don't spray it. <laughs>